Hi, my name is Farrell Adams and this is Go Lang for Tourist. Welcome to lecture two in section one. In this lecture, we'll go through what is it you need to do to configure and set up the tools that we install in the previous lecture so that in the next section, we can start writing code. For this lecture, we're going to be talking about Go artifacts. So those are going to be your Go source file packages and executable, and we'll talk about how you get those. So don't worry. We'll also talk about code organization. And this is important because even though things have changed from how Go used to um, expect and store your source code and packages and binaries, we now have Go module, which is a lot better and give us a lot of flexibility. We'll also talk about setting up your code directory. Next, we'll look at how to configure Visual Studio Code. Optionally, if you install Git, we'll talk about configuring Git. Let's talk about Go artifacts. In Go, you write Go source code, and those get compiled into binaries. Remember what I said in the course overview, that Go is a compile language. So when you write source code, you feed it to a compiler and a compiler produces a binary. Your source code could be turned into an executable binary, which is a program or a command that you can run, or it could be turned into a package. So you can write some Go source code that when compiled gets to become a package. And Go knows how to do this and you don't have to worry about it. And we're gonna talk more about this when we look at how to create our own packages once you have a package or somebody else has created a package, you can reuse that package again in your executables. So packages act as a nice way of not only having reusable code, but also as a way of organization. When talking about code organization, we can talk about how do we group a set of Go files. So in Go, a package contains one or more Go files. Now note that every Go source file must be in a package. And it cannot be in two packages. The same source file must be in one packet. So packages are used both for sharing code and also as a way to modularize large projects. A typical Go project or application or even a package, because remember, once you write code, you can either get an application out of it, which is an executable, or you can make it into a package, is developed in module. So a module can represent an application or a module can represent a package. So you can say, I have a module and it represents a package or this module contains many packages or this module contains many applications. That's why I said this idea of a module is very, very flexible. Let's say I'm writing an application and my application uses some package for a database. Now, the author of that database calls its package for the database version one and then he releases a newer version, version two. But I am only interested in using version one because version two breaks my application. The way I can make sure that my Go application still uses version one is to create a module. So that's what a module gives you. It gives you the ability to version control the packages that are used in your code. So let's take a look at a diagram. So let's say we have a project that we want to work on. And we can break this project up into several features. Now, these features can be a package. There's no reason why we can't develop a feature as a package. And the way I break up my application in terms of understanding it, I can also mirror this with a directory structure. So the two things can go together, right? But notice like feature three can be broken down into sub features. And again, there can be sub packages or sub directory. So what is really inside of a package is just files. Every Go source file belongs to exactly one package. So within each of our package directory, we just have files. So what is a module then? Well, let's take our project. If we use that blue box to represent a module, we can say that our project is a module. And the module there controls which versions of packages that we're allowed to use in our project. So if we're pulling in packages, external packages in any one of our feature directories, it will be controlled. The version of those packages we're pulling in will be controlled by that module file that is in our project parents directory. Okay, so again, remember I said that oh, we can use directories to mirror the structure of our program. So we will have a directory to represent our project, and within that directory, we will have subdirectories to represent our different feature packages and so on. And so if we have a module file 
which we haven't seen yet, but if we have a module files to say that our project is a module, then all the code that's inside of this project will be controlled or versioned according to the rules in our module file. Because modules are so flexible, we can choose that feature three should have its own version and rule. And so we can put a module file there also. And that means the rules at feature three gets applied to all the files in feature three that are imported in feature three and the children packages of feature three. So that's how flexible modules are. The documentation for modules, you can find it online or because we have the Go tools installed, you can find it on the command line by typing go space help space modules. To bring this home and make it a little bit more concrete, let's look at the Golang for Taurus module. So the code that I provide for this course is provided as a module. There's a directory called Golang for Taurus and I have a module file in that directory. It means then that any code within any of those subdirectories that needs to use some external package, well, they're going to pull in the version dictated by my module file. So that blue box there represent my module file, and it's going to say which version of packages are allowed to be used in this module. When we clone the code for this course, you're going to see a module file, or if you want to create your own directory, then you can create a module file also. And I recommend that you use module. In terms of where you're going to put your source code, the source code can be placed anywhere on your file system. You can put it in an existing subdirectory or in your home directory. It doesn't matter, but we just want a directory where we can put the source code. Now, typically you would want to have a directory into which you create several modules. I just showed you, for example, that the code for this course is a module. So you can imagine this is Golang for Taurus. If you had source for Golang for adventurers or something else, then that would be in yet a different directory. But the two directories can be within a parent directory. And so we can call that your Go source directory if you like. Besides having your Go source directory, there's this Go bin directory. And what it is, is really where Go store binaries. So remember I said that if you have Go source, you can compile them into packages or executables. Well, those executables, they go into the Go bin directory. And this is something that bin directory is really what Unix uses to store executable. And so by having a go bin directory, you can add it to your existing path. And so that when you install applications, it's available for you to be run on the command line. Those applications get installed either when you do go get or you do go install. We'll cover all of this in section two. You don't have to worry about it. But for now, this is just information as to why we're going to be doing certain things during the setup. In terms of setting up your go bin directory and your pad variable, well, let's assume that your go bin variable is assigned the home directory slash go slash bin. So for Mac and Linux user, it's very easy. You can set this in your login shell. For Windows users, you can use the Windows way of setting an environmental variable because Windows does not have a shell like Linux slash Mac users have. but if you install git and you install bash, then you can easily type this command at your bash command line and it will set your go bin directory to this value. If you did not install git, then you have to look up how to set environmental variables in Windows. Now, once you have your go bin set up, but in order to run that executable that you might have installed, we want to update your pad variable. Your pad variable is what your operating system uses to find executables. So we want to add to your path variable, the go bin directory. This is how you would do it. And for Windows users, you can just execute this command and it should update your bash RC if you install Git. Now that we've talked what we want to accomplish, let's talk about your source directory. Where should it be? Well, again, I said it can be anywhere on your operating system. If you install Git, you can simply clone the code from GitHub if not, if you want to develop things from scratch, you can simply make a directory and then you can create that go module file with this content, which is just module and the module name. Now note, it doesn't matter if you're actually using Git or even if you have a GitHub repository. Here I am at the GitHub site for our project, which is Straversity slash Golang for Taurus. If I copy this, or rather I can come down here to clone and I can say 
copy this by clicking this or I can say download a zip file so if you did not install git and you want this code you can just simply click download so I click download and it gives me an option to save it so I can save it the other thing I can do is if I have git install I can simply clone it so I can say git clone and then this is the path and if I just enter you're going to see it says cloning into Golang for Taurus. So this means that I now have a directory called Golang for Taurus and that's the code. Notice this file. This is our file that describes our module. And if I cat it, all it has is module at Golang for Taurus at traversity.com. But you do not need a GitHub repo to have this. If you're going to make a module, you simply must have this file so that's one way of getting the code by cloning it and that's if you install git so let me remove this for those of you who did not install git if you downloaded the code you might be able to just simply extract it and for me i have uh unzip on my system so i'll do unzip and i have it downloaded in here and it's golang for taurus and master.zip, that is the file name it downloaded as. And so if I run it, it's gonna unzip it into this directory called git golang for tourist dash master. So I'm gonna rename it to golang for tourist that golang for tourist. And so now this is my directory. And again, I can go into it. Uh, I can go into this directory and there is my file. If I do cat, there it is. Now, what I would recommend you do is you modify this file to have your name instead. So I recommend that you do this instead. Um, you go and we, I'll show you another way of modifying this file. So you don't have to use Vim, but I'll show you later how we can use Visual Studio Code. So since we have Visual Studio Code installed, we can simply say code, go that module, and it will open Visual Studio Code ready to modify this file and we can change it that way. So I've already changed it, that's why it shows up this way. So I'll quit Visual Studio Code and come back, come back to the command line. Now, now you've seen two ways, we've cloned it, we've downloaded it. But what if you wanna develop all the code from scratch and you don't care to clone it or download it? Well, you simply make a directory called Golang for Taurus or, and again, this is anywhere you want to store your code. This is just an example. So you make a directory, Golang for Taurus, go into that directory. What you should do is create a module. So create a module. Remember I said the help for Go module is Go help modules. And then it shows you everything you need to know about modules. But if you just simply want to make a module, you can say Go mod and you can see the sub command for go mud. The one we're interested in is in it. So if we type go mud in it, it requires a module name. And so to give it a module name, we can say github.com forward slash another forward slash go lang for tourist. Now remember, you do not have to have a account with this name at GitHub or anything. And you can use any repository name you like. So if you have your own repository or something, you can just simply use that. You, or you can just simply say Golang for Taurus if you like. Or you can say another slash GFM Golang for Taurus, right? So anything you want to use. And notice it says creating that module file. And there you go. Exactly what you pass as the module name is what it used to create a file with just simply module and followed by that name. We can remove this because it's just a text file. And so we can remove this file once again. Remember, we have an empty directory now. And so if I do three, three, there's an empty directory. So I can create this myself. Again, I'll do it with code, Visual Studio Code, that code.mod and enter. And then now I have an empty file. I can say module and let's say GitHub that comes slash another slash golang for a Taurus. So that's the name I want to use, for example. I save this file and I quit Visual Studio Code. That's how you prepare your code directory anywhere you want to place it, up to you. So now that we know how to start Visual Studio Code, let's start it and install those extensions that we need for Go coding. Run the co code command to start Visual Studio Code. And 
if we enter, it just starts up and it's available. It opens the last file we were working on. But another way we can start Visual Studio Code and what we want to do most of the time is come into our code directory and start it with code that and put a dot to mean the current directory. Now we do not have anything other than our module file in this current directory. Let me go back and clone our code because I want to show you a few plugins that we're going to install. So I'm going to re remove this directory. Remember, there's an empty directory that I have. And I'm going to do git clone instead. And so I'll clone the code. And now I'll type go, go line for Taurus. I can do that like that. That works too. And now it opens our Visual Studio Code with all, showing all the sections and everything. Let's talk about the extension. So Visual Studio Code manages the extension by this little icon here is how you open the extension manager. And you can install any number of extensions. What you can do is search for extensions. Now the extension we want to install is this go one. And so you can search for it or wait for it. There's another way. If I click here and I open section two and in lecture one, you'll see I have a main.go file. If I click on this file or I created a go file, it will offer to install this extension for me. And so you simply click install. So there's yet another way of getting it installed. And so now I can do reload. Now, now that's install, you will see it says that, oh, do you want to install a language server? And it also tells you how some Go analysis tool is missing. So I would say just click on install all. And so when you do that, you will see on the output screen, it lists a few extra tools that it needs to install. Once this says that it's finished installing everything, like it says right now, you can quit this and you don't have to restart Go. If you install Git, Git needs a config file. And basically the config file just basically tells it what's your name, who you are, and your email address. And you can run these two commands to set both of those things. You can, of course, open the config file and do it, or you can just simply run this command and confirm that it created the config file for you. So that's all you need for the Git configuration. That's it. Really, we didn't have a whole lot to set up, but I did a lot of explanation, so it made it very long. Take care. See you in the next lecture. The next lecture is going to be lecture one of section two, and that's when we're actually going to get our hands dirty and start writing Go code. So good luck. Bye.